Hey, so in this video, I'm doing my first tutorial or walkthrough, whatever you want to call it on this interior scene that I made recently. And now this is not going to be a tutorial tutorial because it's going to be practically impossible for me to do a full tutorial on this as the footage itself was three and a half hours. If I cut down my shenanigans, it would be at least two and a half hours. So it's still pretty long. I would have to make chapters, but if, if that's what you guys want, then please let me know in the comment section. The following content that will come after this tutorial will be dependent on the feedback that I receive through this video. So please let me know in the comments. Now you will also find some timestamps which will be useful for you. Uh, if you want to skip to any of the parts, then please make sure you do that. Anyhow, let's get started and see where it goes. So the start of the video just basically shows the me making the basic layout of the of the, of the scene and seeing how the composition might look. I've added a camera and I've I'm just creating the carpet. Also, by the way, just to mention this, I'm just gonna mention this at the very start of the video, this buffering sign that you're seeing, it was an error in OBS. I am very sorry about that. Uh, anyhow, uh, so right now I'm creating the table with the help of knife tool. I basically cut out the shape and I use subdivision modifier and solidify to give it a bit depth. And I'm now just uh, adjusting it manually so I get the shape I want. And yeah, I was just mentioning that this buffering sign is, was an error by my side and this will go away in about a few minutes of the video, but I will make sure that it does not happen in the future videos as this was my first time recording it. So I'm very sorry about that. Anyhow, so I'm creating those, I don't know what you call these, but these are the wall decorations that we see. And uh, I've basically created like a strip of cube and I'm just extruding some parts of it and just moving some parts. That's about it. It's pretty self-explanatory and I'm just uh, re replicating these. Now these bo same shapes were also in rectangular shapes. So I basically created like a stencil and then I used a bevel and mirror modifier to create like a rectangular shape. And then I ended up adjusting the width of, a, of the frame to whatever I desired. Yep. So that's pretty, as you can see on the screen, that's pretty self-explanatory. And let's see what else are we doing here. That's the only thing that's happening in the screen right now. I did end up uh, getting rid of this second frame in the middle as I thought that it was not fitting my composition well. Anyhow, this is where the important part starts. This is where I model the so sofa and that's why I've given you guys a timestamp for any one of you guys who might be interested in just this part. Now it's pretty easy, but it might take some time for you guys, anyone who might just be starting out. I'm just basically replicating a cube and I've put subdivision modifier and I'm just ad adjusting the shape. Now I'm creating the base of the sofa, which is, um, what do you call it? The frame. And I did not make this sofa very detailed because this was just supposed to be a part of the interior scene. It's not my, um, uh, it's not where the use, uh, it's not the main concern in the scene, but if, if I wanted to create a very high quality so sofa, excuse me, then I would end up sculpting some wrinkles on it using some brushes. If you do want me to make a tutorial on that, then please let me know in the comment section below and we'll see what we can do. Anyhow, so the, so the side part of this, uh, what do you call it? The frame, it had a part coming out, ex sort of extruded, which will give support to your hand and it was on the both sides so i also made uh, basically replicated this uh, cube again and i gave this side cushion and i replicated the frame again uh yep so that's what's happening just adjusting it and fine tuning the sofa to whatever my liking is and just give finishing it with this side base now one very useful tip right now I would give you guys if if you have an object in the scene instead of merging it in one you should put it in one collection and make an empty and parent all the objects to that empty so you can control the size uh, and everything the movement with that empty rather than merging it all and then not being able to edit the object. Uh, so this is a very useful tip. Um, now. What else is happening? I'm just basically replicating the same decoration decoratives that I made on below. I'm just changing the height and the width of them. And yeah, just getting the feel of the composition. I believe this is the part where I start to model the second sofa. Again, using the same techniques and principles that I've just shown you. Just replicating things, extruding. And yep, that's about it. Uh, and I have also used bevel modifier. So the list of modifiers that I've used a lot in this scene are subdivision, bevel, mirror, 
and that's about it i guess that, that's about it and solidify yes that's the last one also this by this tutorial by no means is a beginner's tutorial so i if you are coming here i am am I assuming that you know some basic modeling and but if you do want me to do some uh, very basic beginner's tutorial then please let me know i would i will see what i can do again also i'm going to be creating my discord channel so you guys if you any one of you guys want to reach out to me with your renders or if you are facing a, any problem then you can reach out to me on my discord server uh, so yeah now i have started creating this side table which had this sort of what do you call it like a net mesh now it could be useful but i did end up cropping this out of the frame as i believe that this was not suiting my composition but um, yeah i've just basically used this is the only part where i've used array modifier if that's how you pronounce it that's pretty hard on my tongue <laughs> anyhow so yeah that's what i'm basically doing right here but it's not uh, it's not going to be used in the same scene but it might be useful for any of you guys who might want to create this side table and i'm going to finish it with the parenting it with the again the empty and this plant is not created by me but i will make sure that i give you the link to where you can download it for free it's from a website called cgtrader.com but if you do want me to do a tutorial on making plants then again please let me know in the comments and i'm just finishing it i guess with the last um part uh, with the lamp which was in the reference and that's about the last thing that i'm going to create from the reference uh so i have you the lamp i use is something that i had already created for a previous scene so that's why there's a jump cut to that uh, you will see it in a few seconds um, where the, the main lamp when it comes yeah so this is the finished layout i believe and this is the part where i will start to do texturing i have uh, shown you on the, you can see on the screen the three textures i have used in the scene and i will give you the link to all three they are from a website called uh, texturehaven.com and it's an amazing website the only disadvantage of this website is that they are a bit limited on the library they have at the moment because it's free but they create amazing uh, seamless textures that you can recreate use in any of your scenes so uh, as you might have noticed that the fabric color was different in at the very beginning and then i changed it to gray how i did that was basically i added a saturation node and a, and a basically reduce the saturation to nothing and it changed to gray and then i with the help of rgb curves i i basically lightened the color so although this is called a book book fabric or something book pattern but it looks quite identical to what a fabric look like a sofa fabric so i yeah, just got to use these tips <laughs> and uh just just i'm just giving everything a texture now the lighting starts so at the very start as you can see everything is looking very flat and uh the main reason behind it is that there are no walls and the light is just freely traveling and there is there is no window or there there is no wall that can sort of block some light and just let some part of it penetrate through it so that's what i ended up doing i created walls and i ended up creating a window through which uh, the light will come there you go I have, and i created this window with the help of boolean modifier uh so you basically use i used a cube and i put it through a wall and i applied the boolean modifier on it uh this scene compromised of three lights at the very end uh there are two spotlights there are actually i believe three spotlights and one sunlight sunlight is just to basically fill any gaps that i might have left and uh yeah this they, there are there are two lights on the left window and uh, spotlights on the left window then there is one more sunlight at the same spot which basically fill up the entire space and there's one last light which is on the front which will end up coming in the scene later on you will see it in a second there you go and uh, and that's the same principle i'm going to use uh, i've i tried to do some renders i was not uh, completely happy as it was looking a bit too bright to my liking and the fabric texture was a bit too thick so i shortened it there you go i've created another window on the front panel and i've covered it with a wall again the same principle it gives it that depth and dynamic look which i wanted now i'm just basically changing the radius of the sunlight so it covers up the 
whole space and we're nearly almost done i'm pretty sure we are about to do the final render and there you go that's about the final look we had and hopefully you get some insight into this so yeah that's how you do it and if you have any doubts you can uh, reach out to me on my discord server it's a link all the links are in the description the textures the 3d model for the plant and my discord server and our website and if you do end up creating something cool with, with the help of this tutorial or my walkthrough, whatever you want to call it, then make sure you post it on Instagram and use the hashtag cloudart or send me a message on Instagram. I would love to see what you guys create with it. And I guess that's about it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.